Good morning everybody, welcome to Technique Tuesday. My name is Ali Boards. I'm an artist, an author and an educator and you might be watching this live on my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm coming to you from Dorset, from my studio. I've had a bit of a, a kind of sort out during the week so I've actually got some artwork behind me today. However it is that you're watching, you are very, very welcome to this broadcast. Now like I said, you might be watching live, you might be watching uh, on YouTube via catch up, you might even be watching via my blog and there's lots of ways that you can get involved with it if you are watching me live uh, on YouTube then do get involved in the chat uh, there's a little chat window different places for different devices but say uh, hello say good morning say hello to each other as well and I can already see that there is a raft of chat going on so thank you very much to that uh, if you're watching on YouTube via catch up then please do leave me a comment uh, it could be a question it could be uh, just wanting clarification on something that I say all sorts of things and if you're watching via my blog and don't worry I'm going to tell you where you need to go to find all those things in just a second uh, then leave me a comment on there as well don't be afraid uh, don't worry about uh, putting anything down I love to hear from you because it's nice when I'm doing a broadcast like this to know that there are people the other side of that camera <clears throat> and I can see that lots of you are watching and uh, because it is August uh, 2023, uh, there's lots of people commenting on the weather because uh, that's what we do in the UK, isn't it? We comment on the weather um, and actually it is much better. We've had rubbish weather here, so I'm, I'm partaking in that. Now, what is Technique Tuesday? Technique Tuesday is something that I started just before lockdown in 2020, a way of being able to chat to you, to bring you some sort of demonstration or a tip or a trick or a technique or something think like that. Um, and it's a way of us all being able to stay in touch. You, uh, possibly in your pyjamas from the comfort of your own home, but for me as well to reach out and say hello. This is free for everybody to access. Uh, you don't need uh, to pay for any of this and the resources are all there for you too. But I want to give a very special shout out this morning. And my special shout out is to the lovely Michelle, who has actually uh, been a really big supporter of Technique Tuesday this month. So thank you very much for that Michelle it is much appreciated here at Down End Farm Studio so where is it that you need to go if you want to find all of the resources for what it is that I'm going to cover today now I'm going to talk more about uh, what it is that I'm going to cover but let me just take you over to the website so that you can see uh, what it is that I'm chatting about. Let's show you that website address, shall we? That www.learningtopaint.co.uk. So you go uh, over to the website and when you get to the website, it possibly will look something like this. Now, if you're looking on a tablet or a smartphone, then it might look a little bit different. You might not have that menu, those words uh, across the top. Uh, it might be in the form of a little drop down menu. So you might have three bars or three dots or three lines or something that uh, you need to tap on to be able to access those words. And uh, the website has had a bit of an overhaul uh, recently. It's got new graphics. It's got new fonts. Uh, I've tried to edit the text a little bit and uh, lots of bits of information. So what you need to do is, uh, if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to have a cup of coffee, what shall I do with my time while I'm having a coffee? Pop over to the website and the bit that you're going to need is that bit which you can probably see at the top, which says blog. So you click, tap or otherwise onto that uh, part of the website and you'll get this. This is what you will be uh, presented with. Um, lots and lots of information there going back over a really considerable amount of time. So if you're a bit stuck for a project uh, or you uh, need to find something or you want a little flash of inspiration, then have a look through there. I'm sure you will find something. And there you will see it very clearly says Technique Tuesday for August. Now, what those uh, words mean at the top is that so if you search for anything in my website, then uh, it's because we talk about mixed media, we're vaguely talking about animals today, but we're definitely talking about painting on location and you click or tap on read more. And there we have it, all the information for 
today's broadcast. So there's a bit of an introduction um, about what I'm currently thinking about. And I'll talk more about this in the broadcast about what happens if you can't actually get out on location. And I'm going to come up with some ideas for you. But there is our theme of the month. And our theme of the month this month is inspired by Dorset. So my beautiful home county, which I am incredibly biased about, I think uh, Dorset absolutely holds everything that the artist could possibly need. It's got countryside, it's got animals, it's got coast, some of the best coast in the UK, she said controversially. <clears throat> and uh, here is the photograph that I'm using today for inspiration. Now, this is a photograph that I took. Um, it is a view, uh, if you walk about half a mile from the back of my studio, this is one of the many views that you get. And this was taken last year because actually the harvest has been delayed because of the weather this year. Uh, so this was taken last year, uh, as you can see, very hot and sunny with a, um, when the harvest was very early. Those bales of straw after the uh, wheat has been cut. I think it was wheat, might have been barley, can't remember. And here is the all important uh, equipment that I'm going to be using. Now it is a long, long list, not necessarily because I'm going to use masses of stuff, but because I break down every single thing that I use uh, in minute detail. So if you are interested in what I've covered my drawing board in to make it look more attractive, what water pot I'm using, which stacking sources do I use, there's a link there so that you can go and purchase them yourself. Now I need to make you aware that any, if you click on any of those links, um, is what's known as an affiliate link. So I do get a tiny, tiny, tiny few pence, a little bit of a kickback for those, but I need to make you aware of that so that um, you understand how these uh, Technique Tuesday broadcasts are funded. There, just in case you're watching it live, is the broadcast. Uh, it will be up there as soon as it's finished. I will post a picture of my painting and I've started to include as well a link back to the previous month just in case you missed it. That was our sleeping koala when we did our trip to the zoo in July. So there's always plenty of information to be had on my website. Lots for you to see lots for you to enjoy and take part in. None of it uh, in terms of Technique Tuesday is you're going to get charged for. Please don't concern yourself about that. It's all there for you to enjoy. Now, if you prefer to follow me on social media and you're going to want to follow me on social media in the next couple of weeks because I have a huge announcement on August the 20th, a very exciting one, a big, big project for me, probably the biggest project I have ever undertaken. And that's going to get launched on Sunday, the 20th of August, which might seem an odd day to launch something, but there is an extreme significance into why I am launching it on that day. So keep your eyes peeled on the newsletter. Keep your eyes peeled on my social media. A lot of it is going to go live on that day. I'm going to pop my notes to one side uh, and we'll get cracking in just a second. So if you uh, like to follow me on social media, so I'm there on YouTube, I'm there on Instagram, I'm there on Facebook, there's that. I'm going to pop it out and pop it back in again so that you can see. Just put at the at symbol Ali Board Artist into whatever search, even on Google, and you will be able to find me that way. Nice, easy way of being able to find me across all my social media channels. So like I said, this month we are being inspired by Dorset. Uh, but before I get to my project and before I uh, crack on with the demonstration that I have planned for you today, I wanted to talk a little bit about painting on location. Now, painting on location uh, is sometimes a bit of a sore subject for artists. Some people really love it and some people like to go out all set up, chairs, easels, sun hat, umbrella, all of those kind of things. And some people find it incredibly intimidating. And I understand that. I really understand that. Now, it's not also all about if you're feeling, oh, I kind of fancy going out painting on location, but I'm a bit worried. I'm a bit worried I'm going to get judged by other people. I'm a bit worried that someone's going to ask me questions about what I'm doing and I don't feel equipped to that to answer those. It might also be that you just don't have access 
to any sort of location and that might be for a number of reasons you might find yourself in an environment where you can't step outside your front door and that doesn't mean that you have to not be able to paint a landscape it doesn't mean that you can't embrace some of the techniques that people who are painting on location enjoy so one of the things that I wanted to do as I am sitting in front of technology and in a studio and I'm not actually out on location, that is one of the things I wanted to talk about. How do you get that kind of essence of painting on location without actually setting foot outside your front door? Now, the first thing is to choose some source of inspiration that you really, really want to paint. And let's show you that reference material again. So this is the photograph. Now, I've taken this photograph. You are all very, very welcome to, to use it, to go over to the blog and to download it. That photograph is there for you to enjoy. How are you going to find a connection to that photograph though? What things could you put in place to kind of understand the heat and the warmth and uh, the surroundings and all of those things that you can hear? Well, there's lots of things that, that you can put in place. Anything that you find helpful to kind of get you into the zone, to uh, not necessarily have that photograph printed out and be really stuck to it. Here's a few suggestions from me. How about using your device and propping it up somewhere away from you with that photograph on it? So rather than it being printed out and you having it in your hand and kind of slavishly following it, stick it away at a distance, pop it on an easel, pop it on a bookshelf and gaze at that photograph as you would do on location. If you find yourself in an environment that's not conducive to being uh, creative, so maybe you're in a noisy space or maybe the sounds that surround you don't really remind you of a location, well, get some headphones, stick your ears in and then maybe either play yourself some really inspiring music, play yourself something classical or calming. There's lots of places that you can go on the internet to actually download uh, sounds of the countryside, play some bird song, anything that you can do. You do not have to be out on location to still be able to channel those things. And the other thing is the equipment. I am going to go through the equipment for this project and uh, we're going to look at ways that you can set yourself up. But don't fall into the trap of doing a painting. Maybe use a sketchbook, maybe use sketching materials. And that way you'll be able to channel all of those painting on location styles and uh, feelings, but not actually have to set foot outside of a front door. So I hope that helps because I know how intimidating it is and I know some of you lovely people are in situations where you literally cannot be out on location. So I hope that helps. Let me take you over to the overhead camera and I can show you just a couple of things that I've been thinking and playing about with in preparation for this project. So what I'm going to be using today is uh, a little sketchbook. Now this is a Hannibal sketchbook. You can see actually how dinky it is by looking at it in comparison to the size of my hand. And uh, this is what they call one of their toned sketchbooks. The link is over there on the blog if you uh, fancy treating yourself. This is the grey one. I wanted to show you this one first because I'm actually going to use um, the brown and cream one for my demonstration. But I wanted to show you this one because this is a sort of more completed sketchbook. Uh, good morning to all of you who are uh, currently watching this live on YouTube um, and uh, chatting to each other, which is awesome. Uh, and I've, as you can see with this, I've decorated it. This is what the cover looks like when it uh, comes plain. I've done all sorts of things with it. Many of you know that uh, I um, kind of like to use the B as a logo with my Plan B project. I love a bit of crafting, love a bit of crafting. So uh, I've kind of zhuzhed it up a little bit. And uh, you'll see as I flick through uh, different projects. Now here's a handy hint, all you sketchbookers out there. When you buy a sketchbook, don't fall into the trap of turning to page one and uh, trying to do a painting on that page. If you try to do a painting on that page and for some reason it doesn't work or you're not very happy with it, every time you open it up, bang, there's that painting. So start in the middle. Just pick a page. That's what I'm going to do this morning. Start in the middle and uh, do your uh, painting that way. You can put a date on. It doesn't have to be chronological. 
it, it really doesn't. You are allowed to break the rules as uh, much as you like. So you'll see, done a, done a painting, missed a bit, uh, done a, that. I've kind of popped dates on um, and I flick through my projects in that way. Now, one of the systems that I, I like to use a fold back clip to keep my pages open because uh, it's very frustrating, particularly if you are actually out on location when your pages keep uh, fluttering. So I use a bulldog clip. This is not a fancy bulldog clip. It looks like a fancy bulldog clip, but it's not. I'll show you how to make it in a minute. But there's a sketchbook that is a little more finished. Here is the one that I'm going to be using. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to have a quick sip of water because I've still got a cough. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Right, that's better. Um, this is the brown and cream. Now I know in the camera you can just vaguely see that the pages are cream because I have to be lit up like a Christmas tree when I do one of these broadcasts. Um, everything looks a bit paler than it actually is. So um, this is the book that I'm going to be using. And again, here's my first page, not using that, not even going to use the second page. I'm going to go to the third page and start there. And because I don't want these uh, bits of paper popping up all the time, I'm going to use my fold back clips. How is it that I have got fancy pants bulldog clips? I have uh, used normal run of the mill, very plain and boring black bulldog clips. And then I have made them look far more exciting with just a small addition of some washi tape. So uh, that washi tape literally over and I've just tucked it in the ends. And then you have much fancier bulldog clips. So let's pop uh, one up there and let's put the other one this side on there. And then if you were painting out on location, then nothing is going to blow away. So I have done the thing that I have suggested to you. I have got my photograph and let's just remind you of that photograph just in case you have just popped up and joined us. Where is it? There it is. This is uh, the photograph that I am going to be using. Uh, I have got that on my device uh, up in front of me so that I can see it. It's at a distance. Uh, obviously I took the photograph so I can remember kind of what I felt and uh, how I felt about it but it is uh, there for me to kind of channel what it is that I'm trying to uh, get down on paper and what is it that I'm trying to get down on paper I'm trying to get that uh, sense of immediacy I want to create a little sketch so it's not necessarily a painting I know that's semantics but uh, it's not necessarily a painting. It's just a bit of an idea of um, a kind of essence of Dorset landscape. Let's call it that. So I'm being inspired by it, but I don't really want to overpaint it. I'm not going to count straw bales. I'm just going to get it down. And what am I going to use first? I am going to use uh, my good old Faber-Castell 9000 sketching pencil. This is a B, but that's a coincidence because it's the first one I picked up. And if you are watching this uh, live on YouTube then, and you have any questions about the materials that I use or you want me to say anything again, I can see the chat. So uh, just let me know and uh, I will get to it uh, as soon as I can. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sketch out my composition. And I'm not going to, well, I'm going to try, I was going to say, I'm not going to overthink it. I'm going to try not to overthink it. And I'm going to hold my pencil far away from the point so that uh, I have little control over it. I'm going to go across the expanse of two pages because I like that look. We've got a nice little square sketchbook here. When it opens up, you have a nice kind of landscapey shape. And having less control over my pencil means the marks that I make on my page look a bit more interesting rather than grabbing hold of my pencil and really kind of being over controlling about the mark that I make. So where do I want some uh, bushes to start? As that line is going up there, let's pop those in. So I've got this kind of lovely kind of bushiness going on here. So I'm a bit of hedgerow. Uh, popping up that is actually I can confirm that is hedge there rather than trees far away uh, so we've got a bit of hedgerow up there then we've got uh, a line coming in um, uh, how far away shall we put it um, because again you get to control this it is up to you where you put things you don't have to put everything where it actually is you can decide what you want this landscape to look like, how much you're going to put in, how much you're going to leave out, all of that stuff. 
Now these are most definitely trees over here. So let's put some kind of tree marks. Thinking about my mark making, all the time's a very heavy shadow in there. I think I want to straighten that up. So we'll put some trees in there. And then we're back to hedgerow again over on this side. Uh, what we, what's going on over here? Uh, let's just do random hedge along there. And we've got another bit of hill going up. Uh, so I live just on the end of an AONB, an area of outstanding natural beauty, known as Cranbourne Chase. Uh, if you're local to me, then you will know Cranbourne Chase very well indeed. I am right on the edge of it, which means I'm a very lucky girl and uh, I get I am surrounded by beautiful countryside. But like I said, if you can't access uh, any kind of countryside, then look up where I live and hopefully that will inspire you to have a go. I've left out sky. I'm not really bothered about the sky. It, it's it's just a blue thing as far as I'm concerned. Um, it, it's uh, more the, the fields and things that I'm interested in. And let's put some lines in to kind of show the what will be the plough lines eventually, but where the, the harvest lines have been. Let's get those going across the page. So you can see it's kind of very loose. It's uh, got a real sketchy quality to it. I'm trying very hard to not overthink it. Um, I haven't decided about the straw bales yet, if I'm honest, because again, I know me and I don't want to start going meep, meep, meep all the way around with um, hundreds of straw bales. Now this field here is interesting because we've got, where shall I start these? We've got lines uh, coming uh, around uh, and going up the hill because this is kind of, this is on a bend here. So let's get uh, some of those in because they make for sort of more interesting marks on the page. Uh, and then let's get a bit of kind of scrubby nonsense in the foreground. Let's get a line coming in this way. OK, so uh, that is the start of my sketch. It's scrappy. It's messy. Do I care? Not even slightly. I'm going to move on to other things. And the next thing I'm going to move on to is a waterproof sketching pen. This is a Pigma Micron. Um, these are one of the many brands of sketching pen that I use. I just, I'm using this one today because you can see it's a 0.5 there uh, because it is brown. So uh, I thought kind of in keeping, let's remind you of that photograph just so that you can see the kind of color palette. I want it to look hot. I want it to look just like uh, the harvest has just happened. So I want kind of warmer colours, all of that kind of stuff. And obviously I'm working on a cream paper as well. So an awful lot of my work is done for me. Uh, let's uh, decide what marks we're going to make with this. Where's my photo gone? I was having a, a sneaky look to see if you're still chatting to each other or if you've uh, if you've left me. <laughs> no, you're all still there. I can see you. Um, so uh, I'm going to make some marks in addition to the pencil marks, possibly not all over, possibly I will maybe stick to some of those lines that are in the front. And now I can think about the refinement of the lines that I make. I like the immediacy of the pencil that I've got in, but maybe I want to go in now and put a touch more detail in because this is after all my sort of foreground Maybe I want to be uh, kind of more thoughtful about the marks that I make. It's going to have a load of watercolour thrown at it at, at some point. But let's, oh, I've sort of missed, I kind of went across in a straight line and that's not what happens. It goes up there. So let's get random hedgerow in. Uh, do I want to put these lines in in pen? I think I do. I think I do. Uh, maybe we could add, maybe I'll uh, get a nice kind of Morse code mark going on so that not all of it can be seen. Maybe it's a bit more dotty and dashy. That's technical, isn't it? Uh, let's go around here. Some more kind of radiating. I think we need some more radiating. That's better. Radiating out that way. Uh, what else do I want to do? Do I want to put this in in pen? Mm, not entirely sure. I'm just going to move uh, my uh, pushpin magnets uh, temporarily. They're holding my pad up because my, my pad is on a slope, but I definitely 
uh, need to put my pad at a bit of an angle because I want to, to sketch across. So let's, uh, this line I'm not wild about, so let's tidy that up a little bit and we'll go across this way. Where do I want that to end? Yeah, that looks okay. I've kind of elongated it so that we get the idea that there's a bigger expanse of um, land going on in front of us. And let's get that lovely, delicious hedgerow in there. Do I want to do all of it? Maybe not. Maybe it'll just sort of peter out. I'm sort of thinking about where my focal point is, all of that kind of stuff. I think in that case, I do need to bring this line down. So you can see I'm editing. If I was doing something in close up, this would be when I put some of my detail in that uh, type of consideration. Let's tidy those up. Apparently I can't draw parallel lines and talk at the same time, that kind of thing. For the time being, I'm going to leave the straw bales out, okay, just for the time being. But if you do have a go at this, then uh, please, please, please do uh, interpret it as you wish. And this gives me a perfect opportunity. If you do uh, anything from this project please do tag me in it. So put that at Ali Board Artist uh, into your post. And when my name comes up, then just click on it so that it highlights it. And then I'll be able to see what you've done. And also people will, it'll help me out enormously because people will be able to see uh, what I do and how I do it. So you'll be doing me a massive favour doing that. Don't worry about, I'm not going to be criticising your work or a uh, passing comment on what you've done or anything like that. It's just lovely for me to see uh, how you have been inspired and how you have interpreted it. So, uh, have uh, am I done with my waterproof pen? Am I done? Am I done? Million dollar question. The answer is, if I can't answer that, yes. And uh, I don't really want to add, I can always add more later, can't I? Now, one of the things I wanted to introduce to you, no matter whether you are painting on location or not, is a really lovely technique and a product that uh, is very portable. So, oops, sorry about that. Perhaps you uh, find yourself in a situation where you can't take uh, a lot of materials with you. Maybe you have to have a short stay in hospital. Maybe you're staying with somebody. Maybe you like to paint on location, but you really uh, cannot lug a whole load of stuff everywhere. So this might be an answer, and there's variations on this. Now these are watercolor markers. These again are Faber-Castell. These are called Albrecht Dürer watercolor markers. Um, but you don't need to necessarily have fancy versions of them. You could have water soluble felt tip pens. So you know the ones that are designed for children that say wash out of clothes. Those are the kinds that would also do this technique really beautifully. The difference between those and these, of course, is that when you buy a set of felt tip pens, they're going to be quite strong colours, aren't they? They're, they're designed to be quite strong colours, whereas these are what we might describe as being more painterly colours. But it doesn't mean that you have to spend a lot of money. Uh, a little cheap set of water-soluble felt tip pens will do the job. Now, the Faber-Castell uh, Dura markers, uh, they are double-ended. So they have a fine nib there and they have a brush nib if you're feeling like doing something huge. This is way too big for what I want today. Um, I'm going to use the fine tip. And these are the three colours that I decided. I sort of pulled them out of my case because they kind of summed up the colour palette that I think I'm going to be using. So I've gone for green gold, this one here, uh, dark sepia and earth green. This earth green, one of my favourites. But I'm going to start uh, with the green gold. Where's the? It's got a little picture on it and I still didn't pay attention to, to what it was. Now what am I going to do with these? I'm going to do some uh, sketching to add some colour. I don't need an awful lot of it because a little bit of these pens goes an awful long way. Let's get my uh, photo back up again. There it is. So what I'm going to use it for is to is it kind of in addition to the waterproof pen that I have put down. So let's add some of those uh, crop lines in. Uh, let's get that kind of coming across some interesting marks. It might seem like I'm not putting an awful lot down, but you'll soon understand why. 
Uh, if you've not used them before, I strongly recommend that you have a play with them first. Uh, do I want any more? Oh, uh, yeah, I need a bit of colour up here, don't I? Uh, let's put a little swipe of it uh, across that top area. But look how scrappy it is. This is not neat and tidy. That's how you get the kind of the essence of painting on location. Uh, what should I go for next? Let's go for the earth green next. Yes, a couple of people saying, ooh, I may have to add these to my Christmas list. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, they are uh, rather lovely. This earth green, if you're going to buy a colour, even if you only treat yourself to one and you like doing kind of natural forms, this earth green is just marvellous. So let's get some lines in. We'll get a little bit of it in that hedgerow uh, coming up there. It looks slightly paler in the camera than it actually is. It's kind of, if you know your colours well, uh, what would I liken it to? Uh, terra Vert, something like that. It's quite a soft uh, green, but uh, a nice natural looking one. That's what I like about it. Let's put some at the top. I don't like these trees that I've drawn at the moment, so maybe we won't overpaint them. And let's put some dots on the horizon for some of those uh, trees that are kind of far away and right at the top of the hill. What else do we need? I don't think uh, we need much more than that. This is, after all, playtime. So uh, let's play. Um, and uh, I'm going to go for the, the dark sepia now. Um, just to kind of uh, allow a few shadows to go in. This is as deep as it looks uh, on the screen, so I'm not going to overdo it. I want to add a few bits of depths of colour here and there. Uh, what I can do is go to town over here on that dark shadow and possibly a touch along this line. But you'll see in a minute why I'm being cautious with it. So I've got that bit of pen in. And then, of course, it wouldn't be uh, one of my paintings, would it, without uh, a bit of excitement in the mix. So I've got my spray bottle and uh, I have my Casneo uh, mop brush as well. The other thing I need, and what have I done with it? Oh, it's under my drawing board. Marvellous. Let's have the kitchen roll ready because I have a feeling this is all going to run south. Uh, lid down alley, scrunched up kitchen roll, brush, uh, and let's get spritzing. So I'm going to spray it kind of far away at the paper and you'll see what happens immediately. Everything starts to move and run and do wonderfully exciting things. So let's encourage that to happen by using the brush to push some of that around. I haven't got water on all of it. See, these are things that I like, these kind of serendipitous moments that, OK, they might make you want to breathe into a brown paper bag because uh, it's running all over the place and, and we're not quite sure where it's going to go. But I quite like that stuff. I like it when stuff happens that I can't, uh, that I don't have any control over and I can't predict. And even though we are working in studio conditions, look how we've sort of got that essence of a landscape right in front of us. Now, I'm using a little bit of kitchen roll to lift off some of the moisture. I don't think I would do if I wasn't uh, doing a live broadcast. What I'm trying to do is get control of the water. I'm doing the paper dance. You can't see me, but I'm sort of ducking and diving to see where there are puddles and where there needs to be a bit of shine. And then whilst that's damp, I'm going to reach over to my watercolour paints and pull out a couple <clears throat> to use. There's a uh, cerulean, which I think is going to work quite well. Um, let's go for yellow ochre. I may have to put in a cheeky bit of bees gold. Uh, some green, appetite genuine. And some burnt umber. I might need others, but for the time being. And you don't even have to do it in landscape colours if you don't want to. You could do it in any combination you like. Be uh, experimental with it. You know me, like a bit of experimenting. Uh, right, what I am going to need to do is just move that clip out a little bit and move that clip out a little bit. And while it's damp and running and doing interesting things, let's whack some colour on. Now, because my paper is cream, it is going to affect the way that the colour lays down. Am I concerned about that? No, of course I'm not concerned about that. 
that's uh, half the fun. If you are, if you like your colours to be a bit fresher and brighter, then you might want to consider using gouache instead of using watercolour. But I think, I think it's fine. It sort of all adds to it. Gives it that um, really um, vintagey kind of look, doesn't it? Quite like it. So there goes a bit of sky. Let's go straight in with the yellow ochre. What I'm trying to do is enhance uh, some of the colours that those pens have given me. Um, working nicely there. Don't really want that blue. Oh, that's a horrible mark, Ali. Coming down in here, coming across. I've got a great big bit of water running down there. My paper's buckling because this is in sketchbooks. It does tend to be, unless you spend a lot of money, it does tend to be lightweight paper. But that's all right. Again, kind of gives it that immediacy, gives it that freshness helps us to understand what it is that we're trying to say about the landscape, she said in terribly artistic fashion. Right, let's go in with the Green Appetite Genuine straight away and let's just block in some of these colours so that we've got colour... Oh, I don't want to use that brush. It doesn't work for that. Let's swap to my SAA Imitation Sable brushes. Um, what, I can't even remember what I was saying now. Um, <clears throat> it, it's kind of wishy-washy. It, it's not got any detail on it yet, but that's kind of the point. We're after something nice and immediate, something that says landscape, something that uh, kind of looks exciting, that doesn't look too overpainted, all of that kind of stuff. Now, again, because it's me uh, and because I have to do these things, whilst that's all damp, I want to give it a spatter. Why do I want to give it a spatter? I want to give it a spatter because a spatter for me uh, gives it a sense of movement, gives it that kind of sense of immediacy, gives it uh, an interesting, starts to kind of look at texture. Uh, it's onto dry paper. It's going into some of the wet paper. That's nice under there. That was a bit I didn't like. Um, burnt umber. Let's go into the burnt umber. I've got stuff everywhere. <laughs> I can't paint tidily to save my life. Uh, let's get some texture and some patterning in on there. So look, it, I'm not on location. I'm not sitting in front of this landscape. And yet, because of the techniques that I have used and because of the way that I have applied my colour, you could fool people into thinking that I was actually sitting in front of this scape. Now, what I do need to do is I need to give that a really good dry. So if you're watching this live, this is the time to get any questions in that you might have about what I've done so far. Um, and if you're watching on catch up, then you may just want to, you should be able to see the chat that happened uh, on the day. So have a look and just see what questions, see who's talking to each other um, and just bear with me a little while while I give this a blast. Oh, I just want to give a shout out this one. There's so many people in the room uh, and chatting to each other. Um, I just want to say good morning to the, the lovely Anita Pounder, uh, artist in residence at the SAA. Good morning, lovely. Thank you for popping in. That's very sweet of you. As you can see, still drying the back of my pieces of paper as well. And look how much paler it's drying. And look how my pages are all crinkling up. And, but again, it kind of gives it that feel of uh, painting on location, of you not ha having too much control over it. All of those kind of things that we tell ourselves off for, particularly if you are a watercolour painter. 
So now what I've got is a lovely selection uh, of marks on my piece of paper. And so the question is, uh, what am I going to do with them now? Now, uh, Michelle is in the room and she said, I've never tried uh, Plan Air, but I'm planning on giving it a go on my trip to Devon in a few weeks. Sketchbook has been purchased. Excellent. That's brilliant to know. Um, the uh, Some people will know that I'm not a huge fan of calling it Plan Air painting because uh, if you are a beginner, um, I don't like using that term simply because... It gives it a hierarchy that I don't think helps. Painting on location is scary enough without giving it a fancy pants title. So I tend to call it painting on location because then it kind of takes the, the pressure off. So you don't ever tend to hear me calling it on plein air. I'm not dissing those people that do call it that. What I'm saying is just call it painting on location and then it takes the pressure off. So what I've got, interesting marks, interesting selection. What am I going to do with them now? So for the purposes of um, uh, this demonstration, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the foreground, maybe a little bit of middle distance. The rest of it I'm going to leave. We're going to pretend that uh, there are dark clouds on the horizon and uh, we need to get a shuffle on. And so we're going to just work up a little bit of it. You don't have to do the whole thing, just a little bit of it. So I'm going to equip myself with my brush, my kitchen roll and uh, some green Appetite Genuine because I am desperate to get uh, these lovely kind of this hedgerow in here. So I'm going to coat my brush with it and I'm going to use my brush like a sketching tool. What do I mean by that? I mean, I'm going to allow my brush to kind of dance over the surface to get it to uh, poke into some of the nooks and crannies to make it kind of skip across the surface because then hopefully that way I won't overpaint it and uh, it means that I'll get more interesting marks on my piece of paper. Green Appetite Genuine is just an awesome colour if you're painting on location, particularly if you paint on location in the UK because it is the kind of perfect English green as uh, far as I'm concerned and you can get a wide range of tones out of it. So if you do have some watercolour knowledge and uh, you're, you know what it is that I'm talking about, I can get very pale colours and I can get very deep colours out of it as well. Um, I'm just turning myself upside down so that I can get the deeper colours at the base of this uh, hedgerow. And I've been a little bit artistic with the shape of stuff, but again, doesn't matter. Not worried about it at all. I'm going to go in with a finer brush into the kind of periphery of that hedge to add some smaller marks so that then kind of it brings it a little more into the foreground and makes for, for more interesting shapes that will do. Uh, now, what's Rosie saying? A small sketchbook and cheap water-based and crayons would be a great way of loosening up on location. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And then, or oh, what you can do, I know a good, uh, a bad work person always blames their tools, but you can go, well, I didn't, I didn't have all of the colours that I required, so I couldn't uh, make too tight a painting. So let's get that in. As you uh, probably just saw, I, I used a touch of water at the bottom just to blend stuff out. Uh, I'm going to go back in. No, I'm not going to go back in with uh, yellow ochre. I'm going to go back in with my bees gold. Now, just in case you've not come across this colour before, this is a colour from uh, my collection of watercolours. It's a very interesting yellow because it kind of does both brownish tones and it is really beautifully bright as well. It's loaded up with a lot of pigment for its money. So you don't need very much of it to get kind of interesting, strong tones out of it. So got some interesting shapes going on there. I'm liking this, this is all right, isn't it? Um, no one's more surprised than me sometimes at the, the things that manifest themselves on a piece of paper. I know that that shouldn't be when it is my job, but you know. Uh, what's gonna happen in the foreground? Actually, I'm gonna save the foreground till last. I'll save that technique uh, till the end. Let's get burnt umber in amongst that to create some shadows. Don't forget we've got our pen in there which is helping us to see and describe the contours of the landscape. Let's push those marks away, bring some of those down. 
Uh, no, I'm not going to do the foreground yet, Ali. Don't get ahead of yourself. Uh, now, I don't really want bees gold here because this is my sort of focal point. I've got nice mistiness. Is that a word? Uh, going on uh, over there. And so up here, I'm going to use my yellow ochre kind of swished in uh, over this part of it to brighten that up and freshen it. So let's go in there and add a bit of colour. Don't need to describe it all. Um, let's get our green. I don't need it to be as deep as that foreground, but I do need it to be a touch more detailed. So we'll get that in coming across on that part of my landscape. Ooh, it's running in and doing lovely things. Um, getting it into the, again, you see, I'm, I'm painting over the crease in my page. Does it matter? No, of course it doesn't. Stop trying to create the perfect painting all the time. That perfect painting, I don't care how proficient you are, does not exist. It's not a thing. No matter how um, proficient you are, no matter how many years you have painted, you will always want to be better than the painting that you have just created. Therefore, it doesn't exist. Therefore, stop trying to create it. Hint of the day. Right, I've got that hedge line in. That's looking interesting. I am I am going to put those trees in. I'm slightly reluctant to do it because I hope it doesn't detract from the rest of it. Oh, stop procrastinating, Ali, and just get them in. So let's put a line in there. Um, so Trudy has made a really interesting point. And the reason that it's interesting is because it's something I am struggling with at the moment. Wish I could cope with varifocals as it's difficult to draw on location with reading and distance glasses. Tend to stick to photographs. Trudy, that's a really excellent point and I absolutely feel your pain at the moment because I have the same problem. The only thing I can tell you is that I um, have uh, reading glasses that I use when I'm painting on location because then everything far away looks nice and fuzzy and I don't overpaint it. That's my handy hint for you. <laughs> uh, it all looks terribly impressionistic. <clears throat> now, lots of you are saying very lovely things about um, my piece and how I've managed to get the kind of the heat into it, which I'm pleased about. And I think that's probably the thing that, that I took away. It, it's not just about that it's Dorset. It's not just about that it's uh, the farm. It's that uh, it was a hot day. And it, it kind of that very dry, crisp heat that you get in the height of summer. Uh, let's pop that at a cheeky angle. Do, do, do. And let's get some lines going across. And then I'm right on the cusp of overpainting this. Does that need to be darker? Perhaps that's the thing. Perhaps that needs some depth in there, in that corner. Oh, hello, that is dark, isn't it? But, okay, that's all right. I don't mind that. We'll lift it out a little bit. Let's uh, let's move it across the page as well so that it makes more sense. Um, and uh, then let's give it another quick dry before I finish off my foreground and I add some of the other things that I like to add to a sketch. So get your questions in if you have any. Oops, 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 oops. Right, that's not quite as dry as I would like it, but for the purposes of today, it's fine. And then I want to put some sort of scrubbiness in the foreground, so let's build that up. Let's start with uh, that bee's gold. And I'm gonna go back, this time uh, I'm gonna go for a hard uh, spatter. So let's get that in. So this is the bee's gold. Um, which, like I said, is in my range of watercolour paints. And I'm tapping, I forgot to tell you what size this is. This is a size 8 imitation sable brush, by the way, just in case you uh, like to replicate some of my materials. Now, I've got spatter going up on there, and you might think that that detracts from it. Um, I can see that there are 
other members of the lovely SAA team lurking in the chat. Morning. Um, and then I'm going to go back in with the handle of my brush and a bit of kitchen roll to uh, make some interesting, scrubby, grassy kind of marks. Why am I not painting them in properly? I'm not painting them in properly because I know me. I know that I will get far too prissy about them and then I will be disappointed that it looks contrived. So uh, we don't want that. Let's get some burnt umber in that mix as well. So we've got some nice textural elements. Painting uh, on location or painting a location in your sketchbook, because as we've discussed this morning, those aren't necessarily the same thing, is a great opportunity to experiment with techniques as well. See it as a way of uh, using your sketchbook to create uh, patterns and textures and things. I'm liking that. That's too much fun, isn't it? To the point where I really need to get some green in there, maybe with a smaller brush. I love the fact that the SAA team are all yakking to each other in the chat. That makes me chuckle. Right, let's get some of that green in there to make it make more sense. And that isn't in the photograph, but it sort of lends itself, doesn't it? And then, uh, in a finishing up, don't go anywhere yet. Don't disappear, because I know some of you whip off the minute that I say that we're finishing up. I should probably dry that. But down here, I've left a, a little bit of a space. I did sort of do it on purpose. Um, let's write down here, uh, inspired by Dorset technique Tuesday and whatever the date is today oh it's the 1st of August it's the 1st of August yay 1st of August 23 and there we have that uh, proving that you don't necessarily have to be out on location to get that kind of essence of the landscape, to enjoy the same sort of process, to try not to overthink what it is that you're doing, all of that kind of stuff. So uh, I hope that has given you a little bit of inspiration. Just in case you uh, joined us a little bit late, um, don't forget that you can follow this back. You can watch it back again on YouTube. Or if you want uh, to know all of the products that are used, the resources, if you want to download the photograph, you go, oh, I quite fancy doing that, Ali. Go over to my blog on the Learning to Paint, uh, www.learningtopaint.co.uk website. You can find the links on there. You can download the photograph. It is copyright free, so you can use it for whatever you want. All that I ask is uh, that uh, you just tag me in something, or if you do a painting and think, oh, I'd really like to put this in an exhibition, just pop in there uh, and say, inspired by a demonstration by Alison Seaboard or Ali Board Artist, however you like to do it. And uh, I'm also going to say uh, to follow me on social media too, because I have, I'm oh, sorry, I grabbed my cue cards uh, because I have a large announcement on the 20th of August. It is a biggie. You are going to want to be involved. Um, so make sure that you follow me on social media or subscribe to this channel. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button because it all, all helps. Now, uh, thank you ever so much for tuning in. Technique Tuesday is back on the 5th of September. It seems weird to uh, project ahead when it's only the 1st of October. Our, um, our theme for September is the river. Uh, that's a real tricky one because we're going to be looking at water and reflections and things that are on the river or next to the river or any of that kind of stuff. And the Technique Tuesday is going to be a heron in still water. It will be mixed media. Of course it will be because uh, it's me. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, Technique Tuesday. Uh, I do hope that uh, whatever it is that you're doing creatively over the next month, that you have lots of fun. Try to enjoy it. Trust the process. Just enjoy that part of it. And uh, if there's anything that you'd like me to see, tag me in it and uh, I will be very, very pleased to see what you've been up to. So until I see you either virtually or on uh, in person, do take lots of care of yourselves, won't you? And we will catch up very soon. Bye bye, people. Bye. <laughs>